All right, good morning everybody. Good to see you out here for our Sunday School Hour as uh, we have a uh, special guest with us here today. They're not uh, strangers to us because they come by every year in October, the Huskies, and uh, we're so glad to have them with us all day today. They'll be here in our Sunday School Hour uh, singing, Brother Pat will teach, and then we're going to head at 11 o'clock next door to the gymnasium, and they'll be singing some more, and I'll be preaching, and then those who are going to be staying for a luncheon, we have some food we provided for you, uh, everything's wrapped up, everything is sealed up tight, so you won't have to share anything, touch anybody else's uh, food or anything like that, so uh, we're going to be doing that, and then right after that, the McCluskeys will be putting on kind of a little mini concert for us. Uh, it'll be a dinner concert. How's that? And uh, we'll do that. And we'll have a great day as we celebrate not only them coming, but uh, this is uh, our anniversary Sunday. We normally we have it on the second or third week, but we kind of moved it up and put everything together this day so that we can enjoy the day together. All right. So uh, Brother Pat's going to come. We're going to sing one song together, and then he and his wife are going to sing a few songs for us. All right, we're going to sing Love Lifted Me. I think you know it, all right? Got the words up here. Sing it with me on that first verse. Here we go. I was sinking deep in sin, far from the peaceful shore, very deeply stained within, seeking to rise no more. But the master of the sea heard my despairing cry. From the water lifted me, now sing, am I?
on. I mean, it's all right. We know you're not clapping for us. Seriously. I, I, a lot of times people think, you know, you know, stand up here and like, go ahead. <laughs> now, are you kidding me? That's just crazy. I, the reality of it is what we do is we clap because we agree. Amen. It's just like saying a big amen, but with your hands sometimes. And by the way, it's all right to clap. The Bible talks about clapping. Amen. Oh, clap your hands, all you people. Shout unto God with a voice of triumph and with a voice of praise. I believe that with all my heart. So I'm so thankful for that. Man, it's good to see you. My word. Good to see so many covered up faces this morning. This is more pleasant when you're up here looking down now. No, I'm just kidding. I'm joking. I, you know what? I used to, what, what I used to do, I, I used to, I used to, I have mints in my pocket, right? So I would take those mints and I, I really, I put the mints in my mouth, not for me. I put it in for people that I would be talking to. But now that I'm wearing the mask, I put the mints in my mouth for me. You know what I'm talking about? So it's all changed all together. So whatever, that's the way it works. But anyway, it's good to see you today. Uh, we're going to sing one more song. I'm going to teach you a little bit. Get a little bit of a perspective of what the word has, the word of God has to say about having a vision. Amen. We're going to talk about a vision this morning. But uh, I love this song. And really, uh, my wife is really singing it, filling in for our daughter, Brittany. She's going to help us with it a little bit, though, in the background. She'll sing a little bit of it. But, but uh, the verses just simply say, wherever you are, wherever you're going. God knows right where you are. He knows your need. He knows everything. We're doing. Can I tell you what? This whole thing that's going on today, it's not like God doesn't have control. He's got control of everything. That's what's so awesome about knowing the Lord. You know the one who's got it all under control. Even though sometimes I sit there and look at it and say, Lord, do you realize what's going on right now? <laughs> like, you know, he's God. Good night. Are you kidding me? But the reality of it is he knows everything that's going on. He knows right where you are. He knows what you're dealing with. He knows the troubles you're dealing with. He knows the battles you face. And can I tell you something? Whatever you're dealing with, God's right there with you. Amen. I'm so thankful for a Lord that cares about me that much. This song talks about that just a little bit. Always fly. 
figure out which chapter, okay? So here we go. Book of Acts chapter 9. You're going to go to Acts chapter 9, please. We'll take a little peek at some, some things that are important when it comes to our vision. And really, I guess this would be more of a sermon, but that, that would be entitled this, uh, 2020 Vision in 2020. That makes sense, doesn't it? 2020 Vision in 2020. And half the problem is, is what's, what really what, what goes on in my life as a believer, I know this for a fact, is you know, I've been saved for a very, very long time now. Over 50 years I've known Christ as my personal Lord and Savior. And I know this much. I know if I'm not careful, I'll become complacent in Christianity to the point where I'll begin to lose my vision. I'll just go ahead and put it on cruise control. You know what I'm saying? It's just like music, you know, we, we, love, we love music, we love these songs, we sing these songs thousands of times, literally, and uh, if I'm not careful, what will happen is we'll get up and sing a song like Wherever You Are, or I Still Believe in America, and we'll just sing it because we know what the structure of the song is, we understand the motions of the song, we understand the, 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 the notes and the words and so forth, and, and then... All of a sudden, before you know it, everything's on automatic pilot. We know when to project your voice and when to hold back and when to add a part and when not to add a part. I don't want to get like that when it comes to anything in my life for the Lord. I don't want to be the type of, of, of Christian that just goes through the motions of Christianity. I want to be the type of Christian that is sincere and real in everything that goes on in our lives. I don't want to just go from one church to the next church to the next church because it's a job, because it's an occupation. Can I tell you something? When I got called into the ministry, and I really believe the Lord led us into the ministry, I believe when the Lord led us on the road in evangelism, when he led us, you see, that was something that was a calling from God. See what I mean? Well, when I begin to open up the Word of God and I see some of the principles that are laid out here in this very book right here, I begin to see some of the areas that God is calling me personally in my life, and that's the way we ought to be as believers. We ought to understand that this walk with the Lord isn't something that you just do because you're supposed to do it. We ought to do it because we're called to do it, because we, we know it's what God wants in our life. Can I, can I tell you this? And then when you do, and you know, and it's real, and it doesn't become complacent, it doesn't become routine, it's not an automatic pilot, it's something that happens, and it's a, it's a heart feeling inside. Man, it's a whole lot more fun walking with Jesus then. It sure takes away all of the... All of the, the, the mediocre type of Christianity. Man, I've seen it everywhere. A lot of people go to church because they're supposed to go to church. And a lot of people vote this way or go that way because that's the way they've always done it. You know, the reality of it is, is when it comes to uh, our lives, we're to live our lives for Jesus Christ. And we're to vote, we should live it with, pa with passion. It ought to be something that's very passionate. I'm passionate about music. I love my wife. I'm passionate about my wife. I don't want it just to be a routine. You know what I'm talking about? And that's the way our Christian life should be. Well, with that comes a vision. Look at what uh, Acts chapter 9, starting off with verse number 10 says. It says, And there was a certain disciple at Damascus named Ananias. And to him said the Lord in a vision, Ananias. And he said, Behold, I am here, Lord. And the Lord said unto him, Arise and go into the street which is called Straight, and inquire in the house of Judas for one called Saul of Tarsus. For behold, he prayeth. And I seen in a vision a man named Ananias coming in and putting his hand on him that he might receive his sight. And Ananias answered, Lord, I have heard by many of this man how much evil he hath done to thy saints in Jerusalem. And here he hath authority from the chief priests to bind 
all that call on thy name. But the Lord said unto him, Go thy way, for he is a chosen vessel unto me to bear my name before the Gentiles and kings and children of Israel. For I will show him how great things he must suffer for my name's sake. And Ananias went his way and entered into the house and putting his hands on him said, Brother Saul, the Lord, even Jesus, that appeared unto thee in the way that thou camest, has sent me that thou mightest receive thy sight and be filled with the Holy Ghost. And immediately there fell from his eyes that had been scales, and he received sight forwith and arose and was baptized. We're going to talk about this little journey Yes, of Saul, a little bit with Saul, but we're also going to talk about the journey of Ananias and some of the things he had to deal with. Pretty important stuff. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, thank you so much for the privilege we have to be able to have church this morning. Thank you, Lord, that we can gather together as a congregation within the, the, uh, 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 within, within the rules of this, this COVID situation, and we're all abiding by those rules. Thank you, Lord, for that. And the Lord, thank you that we can gather together as a church family. I'm thankful for the assembly. Lord, I know a lot of people would say, well, I can assemble online. And, you know, you, you kind of can, and you kind of, it's nice just to be together and to be able to see each other. And even though we might have to wear these masks for a little while, God, I'm glad that we can still make eye contact and greet each other and talk to each other and have that fellowship in the Lord. Now, Father, when it comes to that eye contact, Lord, may we get some eye contact when it comes to our vision for the world and what we need to do in sharing the gospel. And Lord, I pray that we would never become complacent in this Christian life, but Father, I pray that we would be people that are just longing to, to be more focused on the calling that you've given to each and every one of us. Help us to understand, Father, that these things are not just suggestions. Lord, these are commandments. These are things you, you're telling us to do. So Lord, may we obey you and listen to the very voice, the very, the very uh, spirit of God within us to do as you call us to do, to have a vision. Bless this time, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Of course, we know these verses are after Paul has gone down the road to Damascus. By the way, my daughter sent me this thing and she said, you know, I want to be like Saul and be on the road to demask us. Huh? What about that, huh? Anyway, she's, <laughs> and she's right, you know, I'll be glad when we don't have to wear these things anymore. And, I believe the Lord got it all under control. But, but uh, Saul is going down the road to Damascus, and needless to say, he would persecute Christians. That was pretty much uh, what he was led to do. He was given a great deal of authority by those uh, uh, within the government in which he could do whatever he wanted to do when it came to this, this uh, situation of, of persecution and and then, while he's going down this road on Damascus, a bright light shines. Many of us know the story. And when that bright light shines, it obviously actually puts Saul to the ground. He's blinded by that light. He cannot see. His eyes are blinded by that light. And now he's there, and he's blinded by the light. He hears the voice of God speaking to him. Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? That's what he's doing. Saul, of course, responds and so forth, and not sure what's going on. I'm sure he was very stunned by what was happening in his life. And, and uh, anyway, he was blinded by that light. He was later uh, led into... Uh, a street which is called Straight and in, uh, in, uh, in the city there. And while he's there, the Bible says that he was praying. Couldn't see, he was blinded, but he was praying. I believe the conversion of Saul happened at that time on the road of Damascus. And then there's this guy by the name of Ananias. Now Ananias, of course, was a, 
a, a, a, a, a person that had gotten a vision from the Lord. And I like what it says right there in the first verse. There was a certain disciple at Damascus named Ananias. And to him said the Lord in a vision, Ananias. And I like this part right here because he says, and he said, behold, I'm here, Lord. I like that. I was reading that and I thought to myself, wow, wouldn't it be great if, if we as believers, as we as, as Christ followers, as we as Christians, and uh, 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 those of us who are saved and on our way to heaven, when God calls us to do something, we'll say the words, I'm here, Lord. You know, it's difficult to do that when the, the situation might be a little bit difficult, right? It's hard to do that when God calls us to do something. I mean, I'm thankful for those. I know your Christian school is open and, and, uh, and abiding naturally by all of the codes and the things that are so important uh, with this uh, COVID situation. Man, I'll tell you what, Pastor and I were talking about that. Man, you, you all have just done, just been right on target with everything. What a blessing that is to have that kind of uh, uh, to, to make sure that everybody is safe and, and okay with that type of stuff with masks and so forth and the social distancing and all of those things going on with the Christian school. But sometimes as a teacher, you might be thinking, man, I'll tell you what, I wish I didn't have to deal with this thing. But yet the Lord's called you to do something for his name's sake. You know what you need to do? You need to say, Lord, I might not like all of the situations that are going on right now. I may not like all of these rules and these regulations. I may not like all of these recommendations and the things that they're telling us. But Father, I'll tell you what, I'm here. I'm here to do whatever I can do to help shape the minds of these young people. Lord, I'm here to do whatever I can do to be able to help boys and girls learn more about the love of Jesus Christ, become more educated. Lord, I'm here to do whatever. Hey, Lord, I'm here to be a Sunday school teacher. Lord, I'm here to be in the choir. Lord, I'm here to pick up uh, people for church. Lord, I'm here to be able to help the pastor with some things. Lord, I'm here to clean the building. Lord, I'm here to help serve uh, when it comes to lunches. Lord, I'm here to be able to uh, play the piano. Lord, I'm here when it comes to uh, 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 the leader leadership of the church. Lord, I'm here. Well, a lot of people don't want to say that. You know why? Because they don't want to have that responsibility of being here. They don't want accountability before God. I'm not trying to be unkind to anybody. I'm not trying to hurt anybody's feelings. But when it came to uh, uh, Saul, or, or when it came to Ananias, he was willing to say, Lord, I'm here. And then what happens with Ananias? It goes on. And then the Lord begins to speak to him. He says, Arise and go into a street which is called straight and inquire in the house of uh, 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 Judas for one called Saul of Tarsus for behold he prayed. And it's seen in a, bat, in, in a vision a man named Ananias coming in putting his hand on him that he might receive his sight. And then Ananias realized what God is asking him to do and who he's asking him to, to, to engage. Lord, Saul of Tarsus, you want me to go to Saul of Tarsus? Look at what the verse says. It says, I have heard by many of this man how much evil he hath done to the saints of Jerusalem. And he has the authority from the chief priest to bind all that call upon thy name. All of a sudden, he realizes, uh, Lord, I'm here. And then the task gets a little bit more difficult. You know, sometimes when it comes to our walk with God, we'll say, Lord, I'm here. But sometimes you've got to see how willing you are to see what God has for you when it comes to this task. And it may run into a difficult time. I'll tell you what, sometimes I'm sitting there going, Lord, I'm here. And then all of a sudden we have a breakdown somewhere. Lord, I'm here. And all of a sudden we have a blowout on a tire somewhere. I mean, have a blowout on something like that with a big old truck tire. You know, you're looking at 350 bucks just for the tire. That's another $300 for them to come out and change it. See what I'm saying? Lord, I'm here until I get a flat. <laughs> Lord, I'm here until I have a breakdown. Lord, I'm here until I have somebody in my class that doesn't agree with me. Lord, I'm here until I find that the task is difficult. Lord, I'm here until I've got to do some physical labor to get some things out there for a big sale. To help raise money for the Christian school. See, it's easy to say, Lord, I'm here. And it was easy for Ananias. Lord, I'm here. 
Then all of a sudden, God tells him what he, what he wants him to do. He said, go on to the street, which is called street. He says, I, I want you to talk to Saul. And then he goes on and shows Ananias that Saul's got some things that he's going to have to do. You know, by the way, let me say this. What if Ananias would have said, Lord, I'm here. And then when he said, I want you to go in and then I want you to go in and, and talk to Saul and, and, put, and, and tell him that he's got many things he's got to suffer for my name's sake. And Ananias says, Lord, I, I haven't heard by many of this man how much evil he's done. And I say, Lord, I'm not going to do it. No, I can't. I can't do this. No, I'm not going to go. What if Ananias would have said no? I got to thinking about Ananias and the vision that God had gave, gave him. What if he had said no? Sometimes I wonder if God just, when somebody says no, if God says, okay, fine then. It's just going to stay that way then. Oh, Saul's going to end up staying where he's at, blinded. Saul, later changed to Paul, wrote much of the New Testament. Just little things like the Romans wrote. What if he just said no? And God said, that's fine then. Saul and God, we're, we're, I'm going to mess with Saul. If you're not willing to do it, I'm not willing to do it. Or God says, okay, if you're not willing to do it, I'll have somebody else do it and they'll get the blessing. That happens too, you know. You see, you have to be willing to go. So Ananias went his way. Go thy way, the Lord said. For I will show him things that he will suffer for my name's sake. I will show him the things he'll suffer. And so Ananias goes ahead and finds the house. He walks into the house. He sees Saul there praying. I'm sure he was a little nervous. I would have been if this guy's got the authority by the chief priest to, to kill me. I would have been a little bit nervous. But he goes anyway. And I like what he does. He walks up to Saul. He puts his hands on him. Shoulder. And he says, Brother Saul. <laughs> I like that. Because all of a sudden, now he's not just Saul. He's a brother. Part of the family. See, that's part of the reason why it's important that we're able to Congregate, preacher, you know as well as I do, when we had the opportunity to go to Israel. Maybe you've had the opportunity to go. And that's an incredible trip. But when you go, you see the places where people would assemble. In nearly every city, I believe. And that's where they would assemble and, of course, have business meetings and so forth. But it's also a place where they would worship. There was temples. Places where they worship there. Places where they would be together. Man, I love it when the people can assemble. I don't know about you. I know many of you are on Facebook right now. You might be looking in right now. Thank the Lord you're looking in. And I hope this is helping you in some way. And I'll tell you what, it's awesome. And I know some of you are nervous about this whole thing. I totally understand all of that. Boy, believe me, I understand. But I tell you this much. It's sure, and I know I, I, I could almost, I could almost Lay it on the line right now that you miss assembling with God's people. Man, it's great to be able to assemble, isn't it? Isn't it great to be together as a family? I know when we were on the road and, and, and this whole thing came down, and all of a sudden we had the whole social distancing, and it pretty much shut down many of the meetings. We dealt with a great deal of cancellations, and but, but not as many as others did. I was thankful for the churches that still had us in and allowed us to be able to be on Facebook and YouTube and so forth. We were in Louisiana Sunday morning and then Sunday night's meeting canceled and then we got to uh, uh, Texas and then while we were in Texas we had a week meeting we were supposed to be in but that pastor had to cancel the week meeting. I was still thankful though that he still had us on a, on a, a Saturday night and a Sunday morning via Facebook now we were in uh, uh, we were San Antonio. Uh, that pastor, thank the Lord, he still had us. Sunday night canceled, and then the next Sunday canceled, and and it just kind of got crazy. You know, you know what I found? I found that I was just we would be sitting in our coach, looking at our phones, having church, but it wasn't the same for us. 
I mean, I understand. It was helpful, and boy, I gathered some information, some things that were important for my spiritual growth. But man, I needed to be with God's people. You know what I'm saying? I needed to be with God's people. I'm so thankful that Ananias was willing to go and I get Saul and be there. Say, listen, brother Saul, I want you to become part of the family now, you see. You're part of us. What happens? The scales fall from Saul's eyes. And now he sees a vision. That he's going to carry on the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. And you see the many things that God did in Saul's life where he was used to share the gospel. I mean, what a blessing that was. Those that went with him, those that were able to uh, uh, travel with him. And so how incredible. You know, I'm so glad somebody had a vision for me. I'm so glad at a little good news club across the street from my house when I was seven years old. My friend Jim Ray comes over. He invites me to this good news club. His sister, Ursula Clark, was going to have it. He came over and said, hey, Pat, we're going to have a good news club, man. We're going to have a great time. We're going to have uh, 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 a game time, and we're going to have refreshments and cookies and Kool-Aid, things like that. Then, then we're going to sing songs about the Lord. My sister's going to give a lesson about Jesus. Man, you, will you come? He said, we're going to have chocolate chip cookies. I said, I'm in, man. <laughs> chocolate chip cookies, I don't care what it is. You know, I'm going to go ahead and pull myself away and go get my chocolate chip cookies. Seven years old, went over there. We sang the song. Stop and let me tell you what the Lord has done for me. I remember those songs we would sing. Had our cookies and things like that. And then. And then uh, I remember her teaching a lesson about Joseph and his coat of many colors. Oh, how blessed that was. And how Joseph had forgiven his brothers when he could have put them to death. And I'm looking at that, and I'm thinking to myself, a seven-year-old kid, I'm thinking, wow, what, what forgiveness. And then she goes on and says, but the greatest forgiveness of all time was when Jesus went to the cross. And instead of putting all of us to death, what he did is he went and he died on our behalf. So that we can have forgiveness. And I'm like, wow, that's awesome. And as a seven-year-old boy, I remember being asked the question, do you know Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior? I didn't. She said, if you'd like to ask Jesus into your heart, would you raise your hand? And I did. She said, would you slip out to the side there? We've got people that will come and take the Bible and show you how you can be saved. A lady by the name of Nancy Rude led me to Christ. And I walked home that day with a whole lot more than a chocolate chip cookie in my hand. I walked home with Jesus in my heart. See what I'm saying? Somebody had a vision for me. I'm so thankful somebody had a vision for me. You see, you got to have a vision. Not then after that, uh, man, I want to go to church. We were part of another denomination, and I, I wanted to go to church, but I didn't quite. It was different. So uh, a lady, a couple ladies came by our house and visited our house, knocked on the door, and my mom answered the door. It was in February. I, I was in Wisconsin, and, and uh, uh, they, they said, hey, uh, we got a Sunday school bus going to be coming by here, picking up boys and girls for church. Do you have any boys or girls that would like to come to church? And I remember being there by my mom saying, hey, mama, I want to go. I want to go. She says, well, if you go, you got to take your little brother, Joel. And I said, then I don't want to go. No, I didn't really. <laughs> I said, okay. So they said they were going to be there the next day to come pick us up. I remember put our winter clothes on. It was, it was February. We're outside. Nine o'clock that morning waiting, or, 10, or eight o'clock that morning waiting on the Sunday school bus. Eight thirty. Didn't come. 9 o'clock didn't come. 9.30 didn't come. 10 o'clock, 10.30 didn't come. But finally, around 11 o'clock, my mom called, Pat, Joe, come on in. The Sunday school bus isn't coming. Man, I was, I was just a little kid. My heart was hurting. What happened was, the Sunday school bus teacher, the, the lady that was running the Sunday school uh, bus, had another visiting lady that was with her, and, and uh, she'd gotten sick. And the driver didn't know where we lived. Then the next Sunday, the Sunday school bus came by. Picked up my, me and my little brother, Joey. We went to church. I'll never forget it. I remember being on a Sunday school bus. We drank the sing song like, 
I may never march in the infantry, ride in the cavalry, shoot the artillery. I may never fly or the enemy, but I'm in the Lord. When we do that, fly or the enemy, we would hit the girls in the head on purpose. You know what I'm talking about? Went to church. Man, I'm so thankful that somebody had a vision to come pick up boys and girls on the Sunday school bus because I was a bus kid. Came pick me up. See, people have visions. Those visions change the lives of others. The Lord Jesus Christ. Share one more illustration. I'm done. I'm senior in high school now. Thinking about going off to Bible college. We're up near Maranatha Baptist Bible College. You send a bus down to Maranatha to pick up uh, a lot of the students, and they would come up and uh, come to our church on that Sunday morning. They'd stick around. They'd have lunch after the church service on Sunday morning, stick around for Sunday afternoon or Sunday evening service and so forth. And I remember coming in from my bus ride, I was a bus captain, coming in with my records, put them underneath the secretary's door. Then one of those, there was three guys standing there. One was a sophomore in college, the other two were freshmen in college. I said, hey McCluskey, McCluskey, you got a car, you got a car? I said, yeah. They said, we wanna go street preaching, are you in? I said, yeah, I'm interested. I said, let's go. Never forget, we went on out to my car. I had a 1967 Chevy Impala Super Sport convertible. I sold it. I could shoot myself in the foot right now, freely, thinking that I would sell it. But anyway, but I remember us getting in that car and driving on over. I said, hey, where do you want to go street preaching at? And they said, let's go to the mall. The mall. I said, okay, you know. So we went over to East Town Mall. I remember us walking into the mall. Man, we were on a mission. Got into the center of the mall right there. I'll never forget this, man. We're in the center of the mall. And while we're there in the center of the mall, man, I, I, I started getting people. To, the, the guy was standing there. One, the, the, the sophomore in college was standing there. And he's going, hey, everybody, gather around, gather around. Now, I don't know if you remember Arthur Harris when we were in college. Arthur Harris used to go to the corner, street corners of Chicago and street preach. And he put a hat on the on the street corner. He'd have a hat sitting there. And he'd go like this, oh my goodness, it's alive! It's alive! And he'd look at the hat, pointing at the hat. People would start gathering around. He'd look underneath the hat, he'd go, ah, it's in there, and it's alive! People are gathering around. And he'd look under there again, oh, 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 it's alive, it's alive. And then all of a sudden he'd lift up the hat, take out the Bible and say, it's the word of God and it's alive. I thought that was so awesome. Man, if I'd have known how to do that when I was, when we were in the mall, I'd have done it in a heartbeat. That would have been so much fun. People started gathering around in that mall. Guy goes like this, hey, we got something we want to tell you. And he'd look at me and he goes, go ahead, McCluskey. I'm like, Okay. And all I knew to do was to go through the Romans Road. After I was all done going through the Romans Road, I said, if you'd like to know Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior, guys, and there was that two freshmen in college, sophomore in college, myself, you come talk to us and we'll take the Bible and show you how you can be saved. People started coming to us. Other people, of course, left. I'll never forget three people come walking up to me. One was a senior in high school. The two were seniors in high school. Guys, seniors in high school. One was a sophomore in high school. Went through the Bible. I said, you want to be saved? Uh, this is both the seniors in high school looking at me. He said, yes, we do. Looked at the young lady, tears running down her face. She said, yes, I do. She trusted Christ as her Savior. Came to my youth group that night. The young lady ended up going to our Christian school. She graduated and went to Bible college went to the mission field for Jesus. You say, wow, it's great you had that vision. I didn't have the vision. It was the guy in college, the sophomore in college, who said, hey, hey man, you got a car? You see, sometimes your vision can instigate others to have a vision. Your vision can help others to have a vision. You know what we need to have? We need to have 2020 vision in 2020. Father, thank you for the time we've had at Sunday School today. Lord, I pray that you bless in the service to come and all that's done. May we give you honor and glory. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, we want to thank Brother uh, Pat for a very good message and uh, having a vision.
And this concludes our Sunday school hour. We're going to head into the auditorium. It'll be there that we'll have some more music and preaching of God's word. Thank you for being here today. We'll see you in just a few minutes.